so today's topic is uh, the talk on which i am talking about is the genu velgus and its management pr principles i have taken the case scenarios like uh, about the ages and what kind of different patients in which we use the different implants so moving to the genu velgus velgus alignment is an inward angulation of the extremity in the coronal plane what we usually know and this is the fact with the tibia laterally deviated in relation to the femur but it is not the case with all the patients sometimes we do have sagittal plane component as well as the rotational component and when we have the sagittal plane component and the rotational component then our work becomes difficult so we may face these questions every valgus at the knee is considered to be deformity i would say no it depends on age and the degree of valgus as well who is contributing to the deformity it is a femur tibia or the joint every valgus has same treatment no it depends on age degree of valgus association of sagittal rotational component and also the limb length discrepancy so we need to consider all these facts before moving forward towards our management protocol or using the which kind of fixation is we are going to use so venka and colleagues they have plotted this graph and they have said <clears throat> that uh, usually it's a phenomenon that up to one year one and a half to two years of age it's the physiological virus which moves to the towards the valgus and at around four years the valgus is maximum which settles down at around seven or eight degree of the normal valgus at around seven or eight years so giving to the etiology etiology has different there are different etiologies physiological valgus pathological valgus in pathological valgus there are the cases of the trauma tumor infection metabolic neuromuscular as well sometimes the skeletal dysplasias and the syndromic associations too so we need to consider some red flag signs when we have the asymmetric involvement when we have the short stature and when we have the limb length discrepancy then if we find these things then we our work is not simple so moving forward about the patient evaluation clinical evaluation as well as imaging what actually is required also augmented with the laboratory diagnosis so in case of clinical evaluation we need to evaluate about the angular deformities about the rotational profile and both and with respect to imaging we need to do a lot of other things as well so these patients usually present with the adduction at the hip knees touching each, each other widely spaced angles and medial thrust this is the usual case of a genu valgus patient having deformity in the coronal plane but if the patient is having deformity in rotational as well as the sagittal plane then some additional features may also add so movement for we need to see the movement or the range of motion we need to assess the site of deformity either the femur or the tibia this is the simple clinical assessment method just to see whether the deformity is in femur or in the tibia we need to angular profile measurements tibio femoral angle and the intramedullar distances this is how we measure the tibio femoral angle this is how we measure the intramedullar distance by making this patient to stand rotational profile i always go for the clinical examination with respect to the rotational profile because sometimes we miss these things clinical examination in foot progression angle thigh foot angle so foot progression angle this is what we call and thereafter the thigh foot angle we need to consider it too just to see the torsion at the tibia then about the rotations at the hip just to exclude that whether the genu valgus is contributed or some compensatory mechanism at the hip or not and we need to also assess the assessment of joint laxity we need to also assess the q angle assessment for the patellar mal alignment now moving to the next important thing imaging so whenever the patient comes to us with a genu valgus deformity we will send him for the x ray just get go and get the x ray done what radiologist is doing is uh, what we order that full length x ray extending from the asi to the ankle joint ap standing view and the lateral view this is what the radiologist done and this is what we have interpreted that patient is having a deformity on the left side and the right side seems to be normal on a macular vision but this is what actually the patient have he ha she has the deformity on bilateral lower limb but our imaging 
is not giving that impression. So our imaging should be appropriate. We need to position the patient properly so that we can get the good X-ray just to get the proper AP view and the proper lateral view. We need to position the patient in a proper way. If we position the patient in a proper way by making him stand for the AP view, patella facing forward, knees in full extension and <clears throat> imaging, then our imaging will be okay. This is the actual uh, full length view, AP view, and these are the actual lateral views that we require for further assessment of deformity, whether, whether it is in the femur or in the tibia or how much deformity is. This is how we actually move forward, map the ABC. This is what Dr. Drawl has told. This is what Dr. Uh, other uh, Elizabeth surgeons follow that measure the mechanical axis deviation, analyze the joint lie angles, pick the deformed bone, whether it is femur or tibia, find out the apex of the deformity, plan out the bone cut, and then just pick out the corrective correction method, either by acute or the gradual correction, but it's not that much simple. So we need to memorize this, uh, these angles, LDFA, MPTA, as well as the sagittal plane. So we do have the different options for fixations, either by the acute correction or by the gradual correction methods, like using guided growth plates, using six axis correction systems, using Elizarov. I personally prefer K wires, absolute no, because they can lead to a lot of problems. So out of these options, what we choose, what we should not, it depends on the age and the degree of deformity. So uh, with the help of cases, I would represent these things. My first case was the 12 year old boy with bilateral idiopathic genu valgus having TB femoral angle of 20 degree, intermalar distance of 16 centimeters, Q angle of 15 degree without any rotational with normal range of motion. So my child was a 12 year old boy. He was uh, basically having an immature skeleton, having no rotational as well as the sagittal component to the deformity. So it was clean, clean cut genu valgus. So I have chosen the guided growth. Uh, I did the imaging part. So I have chosen the guided growth for this patient. And this was the after full correction was achieved. So I have chosen the guided growth because the child was having the immature skeleton. He was having the potential to correct himself if we guide the growth. Now, these are the final follow up pics of that child. Now, moving to the case two. She was the 18 year old girl with genu valgus deformity. She was also having no sagittal and coronal component. So I decided to put acute correction with corrective osteotomy and fixation with plate. I cannot use the guided growth in this. She is a skeletally mature child. And so I, and, uh, I was not you know, uh, using the Elizoro or the six axis correction systems. So I have decided for doing acute correction and Pre uh, with respect to the pre op imaging, I did this uh, uh, full length x ray extending from the ASIS to the ankle joint and find both the, both the mechanical axis are outside the third Steven zone. So, I, what I find that in uh, if the child is around 18 years or 17 years old, then lateral femoral condyle plates fit very well. But if the child is less, about 15 or 14, then I prefer to use the medial tibia plates. These fit very well up, uh, to the actual contour of the femur. This is what I actually do in some of my patients. I usually use the proximal uh, tibia plates. Now I stage this procedure. I have uh, corrected the first uh, one leg at a time because of uh, the otherwise the patient will be bedridden. So we have corrected the right leg, uh, left leg first. We have used the plate for fixation and we did the dome osteotomy. This was the uh, x-ray after correction. In the next stage, we did the same thing. The, after six months, we have gone for the corrective osteotomy by the dome osteotomy and fixation with the same plate. And this was the child after full correction was achieved. Now, moving to the th case three. 
she was a 17 year old girl having the genu valgus of right side but this child had sagittal plane as well as the rotational component also the limb length discrepancy as you can very well see so i did the pre op imaging and in the imaging too you can find out that there is a limb length discrepancy present there is a valgus of right side with shortening and as well as the rotational component is uh, not that much obvious on the pre operative images but clinically she was having the rotational component as well so we have planned it for six axis correction system this was the <clears throat> for these are the follow up images uh, during the correction so we have used the six axis correction system in this child as the child was having the limb length discrepancy as well as the other rotational and coronal plane malalignment as well so we need to correct everything at a time so we have decided to use the six axis correction system we cannot use the plate uh, we cannot acutely correct as it was having the rotational component we cannot use the guided growth as she was a skeletally matured side so we have decided to use the six axis correction system this was the final follow up picture the mechanical axis is well aligned this is the lateral image and these are the final follow up pics of that child she is a medical student just now she is pursuing her mbbs now moving to the case 4 she was a 13 year old girl with genu valgus deformity usually bilateral these were the pre op images of that child she was having the bilateral genu valgus deformity the deformity was mainly in the distal femur so as she was a 13 year old child she is uh, as she is a girl then definitely that it's a adolescent child and uh, i'm not sure that how much growth she is having so i did the ct scan found that there is there was a fusion of uh, growth plates so we have decided that we will go for elizero and we have applied the elizero and we did the corrective uh, just uh, uh, start me here and with the gradual correction this was the follow up x ray and the child uh, deformity is quite corrected she is still in follow up so my take home message is keeping in mind about all the possible causes of the given condition try to reach out the provisional diagnosis know how to take the full length x rays these are very important learn how to assess the deformity clinically as well as radiologically don't miss to examine the rotational as well as the ligamentous laxity judiciously use the different methods of management be it guided growth and corrective osteotomy either by the acute correction or by the gradual correction no deformity is too difficult to deal with if we are aware of management principles and we we are well conversant with our galaxy of armamentarium and uh, before concluding i would like to invite you all for our asamicon 2022 which is to be held on 17th 19th june 2022 in pune maharashtra dr ruta kulkarni who is the current president of our association is the organizing chairman of asamicon 2022 i invite you all we have a basic workshop on 17th uh, including all lectures from the renowned faculties we are we are also having the workshop on 17th on the deft fix fixator in pediatric use thank you